All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Saira Mujtaba and with me is Sarabjit Kaur. The headlines. In men's hockey, India beats Spain 3-0 in pool A group match at Tokyo Olympics. India's first medal winner at Tokyo Olympics, Meera Bai Chanu, gets overwhelming welcome on her return to the country. Centre reduces import duty on Masoor Dal to zero to boost domestic supply. JEE advanced 2021 exam for admission to IITs to be held on 3rd of October. Country's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 44 crore mark. IMD warns of very heavy rains in Himachal Pradesh over the next few days. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to leave for Tajikistan today to participate in SEO Defence Minister's meet. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken to arrive in New Delhi today on a two-day visit to India. Fugitive businessman Vijay Malaya declared bankrupt by London High Court. Indian banks allowed to pursue his assets worldwide. And in cricket, second T20 international between India and Sri Lanka to be played this evening in Colombo. In hockey, men in blue defeated Spain 3-0 in group match of Pool A. Indian team took the two goals led took the two goal lead in the first quarter itself. Simranjit Singh scored for the first goal in the 14th minute of the first quarter, while Rupinder Pal Singh shot the second one just before the end of the first quarter at the 15th minute. Rupinder struck again at the 51st minute and scored the third goal for India. With this win, India now stands at the second position in the group with six points. Union Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports Anurag Thakur felicitated weightlifter and silver medalist in Tokyo Olympics Meera Bai Chanu yesterday evening in New Delhi. Mr. Thakur congratulated Ms. Chanu for her big achievement in the Olympics. Speaking on the occasion, the Union Minister said, Meera Bai Chanu has created history by winning the medal in the Olympics. He said the whole country is proud of her as she has brought laurels to the country. 906 करोड़ रुपए की लागत से नेशनल स्पोर्ट्स यूनिवर्सिटी बनाने का निर्णय जो मणिपुर के लिए है वो भी एक बहुत बड़ी उपलब्धि हमारे पूर्व नॉर्थ ईस्ट के क्षेत्र के लिए मैं तो ये कहूंगा आपके पहले दिन पहले मैडल के कारण प्रेरणा जो बाकी खिलाड़ियों को मिलेगी उससे और बल मिलेगा एक रास्ता देखने को मिलेगा हम केवल आपकी इस जीत में जो न केवल आपकी बल्कि पूरे भारत की जीत है उसमें सब अपनी खुशी को शामिल करने आए हैं देश के एक करोड़ भारतीयों की ओर से और देश के प्रधानमंत्री माननीय मोदी जी और उनकी पूरी मंत्रिमंडल पूरे भारतीय संसद की तरफ से आपको बहुत बहुत बधाई और बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ Mr. Thakur also expressed hope that Meera Bai Chanu will bring glory to the country by her performance in the forthcoming games as well. He said, sports connects everybody irrespective of caste, creed and religion. किसी और ने नहीं किया कि मीरा भाई चांदना जी का जो शानदार प्रदर्शन रहा इसने 135 करोड़ भारतीयों के चेहरे पर मुस्कराहट लाई है तिरंगे की शान और मान बढ़ाया है पूरे भारत को आप पर गर्व है भारत की बेटी पर गर्व है और मैं तो ये कहूंगा कि माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी कहते थे लुक इट नहीं एक्ट ईस्ट पॉलिसी होनी चाहिए लेकिन असली एक्शन भी कहीं से नजर आया है तो नॉर्थ ईस्ट की बेटी से पूरे भारत का मान सम्मान बढ़ा मैं देख रहा था कि इतनी शान मधुर स्वभाव की मीरा भाई आपने जो किया है वो इतिहास रचा है और पूरे भारत को आप पर गर्व है Sharing her thoughts on the occasion, Meera Bai Chanu said she wants to dedicate her Olympics medal to the whole country and all those who had prayed for her for doing well in the Tokyo Olympics. Pura dil se mehnat kiya, itna hard work kiya tha. Ye paan saal humne pura sacrifice karke humne ye Tokyo Olympic mein ek medal lene ke liye humne bahut hi mehnat ki. Main thoda sa nervous thi aur pressure bhi thi ki pura Bharat basi ko meri upar hope rakhi thi unhone mera bhai medal leke aayegi. To us sab ko chijon ko leke mujhe thoda sa tension bhi hota par maine pura aman se maine accommodation kiya. Our correspondent tells us more on the Indian engagement in Olympics today.
तीर की तारा तो चल चूखे ना निशाना लक्ष्य तेरे सामने है जीत के है आना इन शूटिंग इंडियन मिक्स टीम ऑफ मनु भाकर एंड सौरभ चौधरी सेल्स टू क्वालिफाई फॉर द फाइनल इन 10 मीटर एयर पिस्टल इवेंट लेटर टुडे इंडियन टीम ऑफ इला वेनिल वाला रिवन एंड दिव्यांश सिंह विल बी इन एक्शन इन द मिक्स टीम 10 मीटर एयर राइफल क्वालिफाइंग राउंड एट नाइन फोर्टी एम इन बॉक्सिंग लवलीना बोरगोहई विल टेक ऑन नादीन हाफिज ऑफ जर्मनी इन द राउंड ऑफ सिक्सटीन मैच ऑफ वीमेन्स वेल्टर वेट कैटेगरी एट अराउंड इलेवन ए एम ऑन द फोर्थ डे ये डे इट वॉज मिक्सड बैग ऑफ जॉय एंड डिसअपॉइंटमेंट फॉर इंडिया इन टेबल टेनिस वाइल ए शरद कमल क्रूज टू द थर्ड राउंड ऑफ मेन सिंगल्स डिफीटिंग थियागो अपोलोनिया ऑफ पोर्चुगल इन वीमेन सिंगल्स राउंड थ्री मनिका बत्रा लॉस्ट जीरो फोर अगेंस्ट सोफिया पैलकनोवा ऑफ ऑस्ट्रिया सुतीर्था मुखर्जी वॉज ऑल्सो नॉकड आउट इन स्टेट गेम्स बाई यू फू ऑफ पोर्चुगल इन राउंड टू इन टेनिस सुमित नागल लॉस्ट टू सिक्स वन सिक्स अगेंस्ट वर्ल्ड नंबर टू डेनियल मेदवेदेव इन मेन्स सिंगल्स राउंड टू इन फेंसिंग भवानी देवी लॉस्ट सेवन फिफ्टीन अगेंस्ट द वर्ल्ड नंबर थ्री मैन एंड ब्रुनेट ऑफ फ्रांस इन राउंड ऑफ थर्टी टू इन आर्चरी इंडियन टीम ऑफ अतानू तरुणदीप एंड जादव बाउड आउट इन मेन्स टीम इवेंट लूजिंग टू हैवी वेट स्कोरिया जीरो सिक्स इन क्वार्टर फाइनल इन शूटिंग महाराज खान एंड अंगदवीर सिंह बाजवा फेल टू क्वालिफाई फॉर मेन्स स्कीट फाइनल एंड इन सेलिंग इन मेन्स वन पर्सन डिंगी लेजर रेस विष्णु सर्वनंद फिनिश ट्वेंटी इन रेस टू एंड ट्वेंटी फोर्थ इन रेस थ्री इन वीमेन्स वन पर्सन डिंगी लेजर रेडियल नेत्रा कुमार फिनिश फिफ्टीन इन द रेस थ्री तृप्ति श्रीवास्तव स्पोर्ट्स डेस्क लक्ष्य तेरे सामने है जीत के है आना Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India is very proud of contributions of Indian Olympic fencer CA Bhavani Devi quoting her tweet Mr Modi said wins and losses are a part of life and added that she is an inspiration for Indian citizens The center has accredited a total of 236 academies across the country under the Khelo India scheme for the training of Khelo India athletes in a written reply to a question in Rajya Sabha Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports Anurag Singh Thakur informed the initiative of Khelo India envisages support to national regional and state sports academies He said under this scheme 360 Kelo India centers and 24 Kelo India state centers of excellence have been notified. Home Minister Amit Shah has spoken to the chief ministers of Assam and Mizoram and asked them to resolve the border issue amicably. Six Assam police personnel were killed while several people were injured in clashes along Assam Mizoram border yesterday. President Ram Nath Kovind will address the 19th annual convocation of the University of Kashmir in Srinagar today. He is on a four-day visit to Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh from 25th of this month. He visited Baramulla yesterday and paid tributes to the soldiers who had sacrificed their lives for the nation on the 22nd anniversary of Kargil Vijay Divas. India's cumulative COVID vaccination coverage has crossed the landmark milestone of 44 crore. Also in another significant achievement Maharashtra has become the first state to vaccinate more than 1 crore people with both doses of the vaccine more than 57 lakh vaccine doses were administered yesterday 27 lakh 20900 vaccine doses were administered as the first dose and 3 lakh 49496 vaccine doses were given as the second dose in the age group of 18 to 44 years yesterday The union government has reduced the import duty on masoor dal to zero. It has also cut the agriculture infrastructure development cess on masoor to 10% from 20%. The move will boost domestic supply and check its price rise. A notification in this regard was tabled in both houses of parliament by finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman. The reduced customs duty and cess will come into effect from today. As per the notification customs duty has been reduced from 10% to nil on lentils or masoor dal originated in or exported from countries other than the US besides the basic customs duty has been reduced from 30% to 20% on lentils originating in or exported from the US the estimated revenue implication of this notification is about 1100 crore rupees Lok Sabha has passed the Factoring Regulation Amendment Bill 2021 and the National Institutes of Food Technology Entrepreneurship and Management Bill 2021 amid pandemonium. Moving the Factoring Regulation Amendment Bill, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said, the changes made in the bill are in the interest of MSME sector. She said it simplifies the definition of factoring business in which banks, non-banking financial companies or any business entity is involved. 
The government has said that systemic measures under the Black Money Act has yielded results and undisclosed income of several crores has been detected. Minister of State for Finance Pankaj Chaudhary said in a written reply in Lok Sabha that assessment orders under Section Black Money Act 2015 have been passed in 166 cases as on 31st of May this year where demand of 8216 crore rupees has been raised. Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that JEE Advanced 2021 examination for admission in IITs will be held on the 3rd of October. In a tweet the minister said the examination will be conducted adhering to all covid protocols. Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Zubaini Rani will be launching a 24/7 helpline number today for women affected by violence. The aim of the helpline is to provide round the clock emergency and non emergency complaints and counseling services to women affected by violence. The helpline will link them with appropriate authorities such as the police, hospitals, district legal service authority, psychological services and provide information about women related government programs across the country through a single number. The helpline is in line with several initiatives taken up by the ministry and national commission for women giving utmost priority to women's safety. Offer for sale of government equity in Hudko will open today for non-retail investors. Department of Investment and Public Asset Management said that government would divest 5.5% shares with an additional 2.5% as green shoe option. The government has said that there is no proposal of privatization of defense public sector undertaking DPSUs and Ordnance Factory Board OFP which are under the administrative control of Department of Defense Production. This was stated by Minister of State for Defense Shri Ajay Bhatt in a written reply to a question in the Rajya Sabha. The news services division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program Corona Jagrutta series today will bring you a special discussion on COVID-19. Dr. Neeraj Nishchal of Fames New Delhi will participate in the live discussion. Listeners can ask questions to the expert on toll-free telephone number 18001115767. Repeat 18001115767. And on telephone number zero double one two double three one double four double four. Repeat zero double one two double three one double four double four. You can also post your queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts using hashtag Ask AIR. This can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from nine thirty p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.nic. newsonair.gov.in and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on our News on AIR app for updates. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. In men's hockey, India beat Spain 3-0 in Pool A group match of Tokyo Olympics. India's first medal winner at Tokyo Olympics Mirabai Chanu gets overwhelming welcome on her return to the country. Center reduces import duty on masoor dal to zero to boost domestic supply. G advanced 2021 exam for admission to IIT is to be held on 3rd of October. Country's covid vaccination coverage crosses 44 crore mark. IMD warns of very heavy rains in Himachal Pradesh over the next few days. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to leave for Tajikistan today to participate in SCO Defence Ministers Meet. US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken to arrive in New Delhi today on a two-day visit to India. Fugitive businessman Vijay Mallya declared bankrupt by London High Court. Indian banks allowed to pursue his assets worldwide. And in cricket, second T20 international between India and Sri Lanka to be played this evening in Colombo. For quick news updates round the clock. follow us on our twitter handle at air news alerts chalo dil se ek shuruaat kare chalo ek faisla aaj kare maat nahi to to kenge karo na ko rokenge chalo ek irada kar de chalo kuch vaada kar de Welcome 
back you're listening to the morning news Defense Minister Rajnath Singh will leave for Tajikistan's capital Dushanbe today to participate in Shanghai Cooperation Organization's Defense Ministers Meet. The main engagement which is tomorrow includes a joint call by the SEO Defense Ministers with Tajikistan's President Imam Ali Rahman. The SEO as a grouping occupies 60% of the Eurasian continent which is over 34 million square kilometers. SEO countries are having a population of over 3 billion that is almost half of the world's population. Fugitive Indian businessman Vijay Mallya has been declared bankrupt by a British court allowing Indian banks to pursue his assets worldwide. During a virtual hearing of the Chancery Division of the London High Court, Chief Insolvencies and Companies Court Judge Michael Briggs said he adjudicates Mallya bankrupt. The court also declined permission for an appeal or a stay on the bankruptcy order. Malia owes more than 9000 crore rupees to a consortium of banks in principal and interest. The petitioners were SBI led consortium of 13 Indian banks. The ruling is being seen as a major victory for the consortium of Indian banks pursuing a worldwide freezing order to seek repayment of debt owed by Malia's now defunct Kingfisher Airlines by seizing his Indian assets. Malia who fled to the UK is being probed by the Indian agencies for bank fraud and money laundering charges and is on bail in the UK. US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken will arrive in New Delhi today on a two-day visit to India. This is Secretary Blinken's first visit to India after assuming charge as US Secretary of State. More details from our correspondent. Tomorrow Mr Blinken will meet external affairs minister Dr S J Shankar and national security adviser Ajit Doval both sides will review the robust and multifaceted India US bilateral relations and potential for consolidating them further discussions will focus on regional and global issues of mutual interest including recovery from the covid-19 pandemic the indo pacific region afghanistan and cooperation in the united nations secretary blinken's visit is an opportunity to continue the high level bilateral dialogue and bolster the india us global strategic partnership anupam mish ar news delhi myanmar's janta has cancelled the results of 2020 polls won by aung san suu kyi's party saying they were not free and fair the move comes almost 6 months after military janta deposed the nobel laureate in a coup suu kyi has been detained since the coup Myanmar has been in chaos since the military's power grab with more than 900 killed in a crackdown on dissent. White House has announced that United States has no immediate plans to lift existing travel restrictions amid concerns over the rising number of coronavirus cases driven by the Delta variant. White House press secretary Jen Psaki said US will maintain existing travel restrictions at this point. The more transmissible Delta variant is spreading both here and abroad, she added. Saki said the trend of rising cases in the US is likely to continue in the coming weeks but will mostly affect unvaccinated people. Travelers from the European Union, Britain and Iran have faced restrictions for more than a year after the Trump administration first introduced the measure against China last year. India was added to the list in early May. EU leaders have called on the US to drop restrictions on vaccinated and negative tested travelers following the introduction of such exceptions for visitors from the US to EU member states. Puri in Odisha became the first city in the country to implement the drink from tap project. This was stated by Chief Minister Navin Patnaik while inaugurating the project yesterday. More details from our Bhubaneswar correspondent. He said Puri is now placed in the big league of global cities like London, New York and Singapore in providing potable water directly from the tap. The project will benefit about 2.5 lakh residents of Puri city in addition to about 2 crore tourists who visit the whole city every year. The drink from tap project saves people from the botheration of either storing or filtering water before consumption. This apart, the project will also spare the tourists from using water bottles thereby uploading about 400 metric tons of plastic waste from the pilgrim city of puri another project that was completed in 9 months water fountains have been set up in about 400 sites inside the city there is chandradas air news bhubaneswar in cricket the second t20 international between india and sri lanka will be played at r premadasa stadium in colombo this evening the match will start at 8 pm india won the first t20 international of the three match series on sunday 
In the backdrop of heavy rains and landslides in various districts in Maharashtra, Chief Minister Udhav Thakre, after returning from flooded districts, had a review meeting with all concerned department secretaries yesterday in Mumbai. Speaking in the meeting, he directed all secretaries to take rehabilitation work on a war footing to provide sanitation and health facilities in order to prevent the spread of diseases in the flood hit areas. He also directed to prepare a consolidated detailed report on how much damage was caused in the flood hit areas. More from our Mumbai correspondent. Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre asked officers to restore severe electricity and water supply units and repair immediately in the flood affected regions. He said most of the roads are eroded and bridges are submerged. He directed to prepare a comprehensive plan of damaged roads and infrastructural facilities in the hilly region, adding that drones should be used for the panchanamas along with the latest technology. He also asked to accumulate the information of all the traders and businessmen. Such calamities do not recur frequently, therefore, prepare district proposals to cope with such situations. He asked administration to set up training centers of SRDF and NRDF and take help of corporate world for fastest results. Bhavna Gokhale, AIR News, Mumbai. Various parts of Himachal Pradesh are experiencing intermittent light to moderate rains for the last few days. The Indian Meteorological Department has forecast very heavy rainfall in the state over the next few days. The Med Department has issued a warning of heavy to very heavy rainfall at isolated places of the state till 30th of this month. A red alert has also been issued for heavy to extremely heavy rainfall at isolated places of Bilaspur, Kangra, Sirmor and Mandi districts during the next 36 hours. The Med Department has also issued an advisory regarding possibility of landslides at many places in the state. It also warned of flash floods and uprooting of trees due to heavy rains in the next few days. The State Meteorological Center has advised locals and tourists not to venture near rivers and rivulets in the hill state in the coming days to avoid any untoward incident. The national capital Delhi received moderate to heavy rainfall today morning, bringing the temperatures down and giving people relief from the sultry weather conditions. Many parts of the city have reported waterlogging on roads and lanes. According to IMD, thunderstorms with moderate to heavy intensity rain would continue to occur over many places of the city today. Mumbai suburb Garden Minister Aditya Thakre chaired a meeting with collector Mumbai suburban district and assistant commissioners of PMC that have landslide prone and vulnerable informal housing in their wards. Relief and repair operations for the three recent landslides in Chembur, Bhandu, Vikroli were reviewed in this meeting. He asked officers to expedite all pending backlog of landslide protection walls to keep no request pending by 2022-23. Mr. Thakre instructed to work on auditing the vulnerability of the region and suggest alternate plans for the same. In Olympics today, in table tennis, Sharad Kamala Chanta will take on M.A. Long of China in round 3. In badminton, star Indian doubles player Satvik Sai Raj Ranki Reddy and Chirag Shetty will take on Great Britain's pair Ben Lane and Sean Bendy this morning in the final Group A match at the Tokyo Olympics. All India Radio will broadcast live and off-tube commentaries in Hindi and English on the match. It will also be carried on our YouTube DTH and News on AIR mobile app. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast for today. National capital Delhi is predicted to have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Temperatures will hover between 27 and 30 degrees Celsius. Mumbai is also expected to have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Chennai is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with temperature varying between 24 and 37 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city recorded a minimum temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be of around 32 degrees. Srinagar will experience partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Temperatures will hover between 22 and 30 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Temperature will hover between 24 and 30 degrees Celsius. Leh is expected to have a mainly clear sky today. Gilgit will have a mainly clear sky as well. Muzaffarabad will have thunderstorms. Minimum temperature was 22 while maximum will be around 26 degrees Celsius. Dehradun will have a generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. Shimla is, expect is expected to have a thunderstorm with rain. Chandigarh will see a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Ahmedabad will have a generally cloudy sky, while in Patna, 
The sky will be generally cloudy with light rain. Guwahati and Fall Shillong as well all will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. In Guwahati, the minimum temperature was 26, while maximum will be 33 degrees Celsius. Imphal noted a minimum temperature of 22 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 30 degrees Celsius. In Shillong, temperature will hover between 18 and 25 degrees Celsius. In Azawal, minimum temperature was 19, while maximum will be around 26 degrees Celsius. Kohima will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Temperature will move from 18 to a maximum of around 26 degrees Celsius. While Agartala is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperature will hover between 26 and 33 degrees Celsius. Ita Nagar and Gangtok will experience a generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. In Ita Nagar, temperature will hover between 23 and 31, while in Gangtok, temperature will hover between 18 and 23 degrees Celsius. Port Blair is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Temperatures will vary between 26 and 32 degrees Celsius. Vishakhapatnam will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain and temperatures will vary between 27 and 34 degrees Celsius. Raipur will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperatures will hover between 25 and 29 degrees Celsius. Diu is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Temperature will move from 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. Rachi will have a generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. The city registered a minimum temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 29 degrees Celsius. Hyderabad is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of development of thunder lightning. Temperature will hover between 23 and 32 degrees Celsius. Lebanon's president today appointed Najib Mikati as the country's new prime minister designate after the billionaire businessman won the approval of a majority of lawmakers. The two-time prime minister has secured 72 votes out of a total of 118 members of parliament. After his meeting with President Michael Eon, Mr. Mikati said the vote of confidence by members of parliament is necessary for his appointment, but he is keen to gain the confidence of the Lebanese population, every man and woman, and the youth. And now an overview of today's newspapers. All dailies have widely covered the observation of Kargil Vijay Divas, resignation of B.S. Yadurepa, and a plethora of stories related to the Olympics. Hindustan Times headlines Yadurappa resigns as CM after a trial by fire the paper also carries a picture of him wiping off his tears during an emotional speech before his resignation the pioneer notes BSY makes honorable exit hopes for sun's rise all dailies have noticed the overwhelming welcome meera bai chanu received on her arrival after winning a silver at the olympics The Asian Age carries a picture of the weightlifter being swarmed by the press on her arrival at the Delhi airport. Financial Express writes, Olympics medal lifts Mirabai's brand value. The Pioneer on its front page carries a picture of the three chiefs of the armed forces paying their tributes to the martyrs of the Kargil War on Vijay Divas at the National War Memorial in Delhi. And finally, years of focus on ornamental trees that are not native species have rendered many native tree species endangered. In order to conserve them, Hindustan Times notes, efforts on to revive Delhi's native tree varieties. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. In men's hockey, India beats Spain 3-0 in Pool A group match of Tokyo Olympics. India's first medal winner at Tokyo Olympics, Meera Bai Chanu, gets overwhelming welcome on her return to the country. Center reduces import duty on masoor dal to zero to boost domestic supply. JEE advanced 2021 exam for admission to IITs to be held on 3rd of October. Country's COVID vaccination coverage crosses 44 crore mark. IMD warns of very heavy rains in Himachal Pradesh over the next few days. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh to leave for Tajikistan today to participate in SEO Defence Minister's meet. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken to arrive in New Delhi today on a two-day visit to India. Fugitive businessman Vijay Malya declared bankrupt by London High Court. Indian banks allowed to pursue his assets worldwide. And in cricket, second T20 international between India and Sri Lanka to be played this evening in Colombo. 
For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day.